you know, some things work better than others. I still, fans still come to me today and go, how could you put eagle eye into the game? That's <laughs> such a terrible spell. And it's like, what? You only found one thing wrong with it? That's, that's, that's pretty, pretty good, good yeah. out of a thousand <laughs> different combinations. Something I wanted to really ask you was, um, so when I played this game, I was maybe seven, eight, nine. I barely spoke English, I would say. So I didn't really remember the names of towns. I didn't remember character names. I didn't remember, let's say, the more fundamental things. But I had this childlike enjoyment of the game where when I eventually started playing when I was 13, 14, when I got into a turn-based battle, I would know exactly what the outcome is, or pretty close just by looking at the picture of the, oh, this is a dragon from this city, it's going to attack this skeleton, it's going to do like, and I would be maybe one or two off from how many units he would lose. So, talking about the balance in the game and the structure, uh, the calculations behind the damage system, were you involved in any of that, or did, or did, were you just a, an outsider for that kind of stuff? Well, my my designer was involved with it, Greg Fulton. He would, uh, he would, he would every week he'd get together with uh, John Van Canaham, uh, who, who created the the, the 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 very first heroes of my magic game? Although it was called uh, King's Bounty, we call as well. We refer to it as uh, Heroes of My Magic Zero, the game King's Bounty. Um, so he he they get together and they would run spreadsheet simulations of different characters fighting each other. So they program in the stats and then you know and then put in the battle calculations and then run you know run. Uh, hundreds of battles against each other to figure out who would win what percentage at the time as a result of these battles. And that way they, they would go and balance them out um, uh, the way they wanted. So uh, I was, uh, I, I was familiar with the process and I'd hear about the results of their, of their get togethers. And then we tweak things appropriately. But uh, a key thing in, 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 in heroes was that we wanted you to be able to look at a particular creature and be able to tell how strong it was compared to other creatures and get some sense about what its special attacks were. So it was, it was all about having, having the visuals communicate the function, form communicating function. Uh, that, that was really important to us. And I think it was, it was one of the things that, that made, made the game stand out because it was just, it was so easy to use. You just look at it and yeah, you knew what was going on yeah. and what was likely to happen. So that, so the visuals aid and aided uh, the players in their strategic decisions. I'm living proof of that because I had no knowledge of English or you know basic mathematics, and I would kind of understand. Whoa, this is a bigger creature, higher power. This is a, a big dragon. This is a skinny little skeleton. I would know right away. Okay, this is how that's going to go down. Yeah, you know, I was always, I was always, I've always wondered why is the game so popular in, in Europe and especially Eastern Europe? And maybe that's one of the reasons maybe it was because we were, we were successful in creating a visual language for the game that, that really transcended language barriers. And it was a perfect genre for, I think Eastern European uh, folk who love, you know, RTS games that love turn-based games. For some reason, that part of the world, I'm not sure why, but really enjoys those games. And did the system, the damage system come from Dungeons and Dragons a little bit or what was the, I guess, origin of that kind of stuff? I don't, I, I don't know what the origin was. We, 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 we borrowed a lot of from Heroes of My Magic 2. In fact, we use the same game engine as Heroes of My Magic 2. So, uh, and, and we did want to be, you know, we were, we were a sequel. So we didn't want to, we wanted to add to and maybe modify a little bit. So we didn't want to do our, our, uh, a dramatic departure from what was done before. So uh, a lot, a lot of the basic, uh, basic uh, equations were, were the same. Did you understand the balance behind the game? Because there's so many different ways you can kind of, it's very different from a game of like, let's say Age of Empires, which is really balanced from, from a you know general perspective. You have civilizations, they're all have their strengths and weaknesses, but they're all competitive within a certain, let's say, realm and they're in their own scope. Heroes is very different because there's so many ways to exploit the game, let's say, to become, you know, I, diplomacy from um, what, what the witches uh, st stockpiling a bunch of witches. Um, do, were you aware of that? Like, this is how the game would be played and the people would find these exploits and, and really push the game to its limits. Well, uh, the, the, when it's, it wasn't hard to, to, it's not hard to imagine that that would happen. I mean, the, the game is, 
it's so complex. You got you had uh, eight different towns, and each one had uh, what, seven different creatures that you can control. And you had heroes to lead the towns that had different abilities, and there were there were there were, like, there were dozens of different heroes, and then different magic spells. And each of those uh, uh, had, had their effects, and then there there's so many power ups and bonuses, and, right? The so much bonuses, the player yeah, bonuses. Yeah, I mean, a, a huge number of combinations, and you know, some things work better than others. I still, fans still come to me today and go, "How could you put Eagle Eye into the game? That's <laughs> such a terrible spell." And it's like, what? You only found one thing wrong with it? That's that's, that's pretty, pretty good, good yeah. out of a thousand <laughs> different combinations. Um, but yeah, um, I always the more complex the game, the more opportunity for exploits. Uh, but we had a real good testing team. We had we had a lot of level designers who were really good. Uh, so they create maps and they you know they they in creating the maps they find problems with the uh, with the creatures and the heroes and the and all the power ups and all the spells and such. And then uh, we had a good testing team that would just play through the game over and over and over and they'd find all the problems with it. Right. And it so gets harder and harder to balance, right? As, as you add more, you know, variables, it gets almost impossible yeah. to balance. Yeah. Any new thing can knock everything else out of whack. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a very challenging job. I was going to ask, do you have a favorite strategy that you would use like basic, di like di diplomacy or power liches, or did you have a thing that you always went to when you played or no? Oh, it's been a while since I played it. Um, I, uh, I I probably relied more on might than I did magic. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, I, and I certainly I placed a lot of emphasis on on the uh, on the armies I was putting together. Um, I uh, I probably relied too much on uh, uh, on, on on getting my uh, town as wealthy as possible by building the building. Uh, building a the money center, generating the stretches yeah. first. Right. Right. Um, and in retrospect, probably focus on, 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 uh, on things that would, uh, that would improve my, my ability in combat, uh, first. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I did have a strategy, but I can't say that it was a very good strategy. <laughs> right. That's kind of funny to, to, you know, say from a guy that made the game, you would think he would have the ultimate, you know, tricks up his sleeve type, uh, type of, well, that's the, the funny thing is, when you're making a game, you don't have as much time to play it. Uh, so I certainly, you know, certainly spend some time each day playing the game, but uh, not on the level that that uh, really good players, you know, do once the game is released. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I have all very little free time when I'm in the middle of game development. You know, when you're working 68 hours a week, uh, not much time left over for gameplay.